Welcome to Kingdom Over Everything. I am your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shea Bynes. There is a lot of conversation in the body of Christ around the Proverbs 31 woman, but there's not a whole lot of conversation around the Proverbs 31 man or the Proverbs 31 husband. So I asked my husband of 24 years, Mr. Phil Bynes, to join me for a chat and explore the role of the Proverbs 31 husband who is the partner and the pillar of support of the Proverbs 31 wife. So listen in, enjoy, and share your thoughts with me in the comments. Babe, what's going on? All is well. How's everything with you, my love? It's good. Thank you for joining me on this new Kingdom Over Everything podcast. Glad to have you. Of course, have to have you in this early few uh, guests. Got to have you as my king. Not my King Jesus, but my other king. My my king, King Bynes, King Husband. <laughs> well, thank you for honoring me. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to talk to you and just kind of have a conversation around this phrase that I heard you use before a few times. And I don't even think you and I have gotten into it that much other than the kind of, we talk marriage stuff all the time, of course, but you use this expression, Proverbs 31 husband, that I thought was kind of interesting because people don't talk about the Proverbs 31 husband. They talk about the Proverbs 31 wife. So I was like, we should we should hang out and talk about that a bit. Cause I think that would be kind of a fun thing to explore. What do you think? I think that's good. Okay, cool. Let's get into it. Well, let's at least give some context for our relationship. Let's, let's give some background. Let's kind of start there. So you and I, um, you and I met back in high school. And so we've been together a very long time. I uh, started dating at, I think we were, I, we were both 16. You turned 17 shortly after um, we got together. And so high school, then college, even though we were apart during our college years, we were together in relationship and apart physically because we were in two different locations. And then basically in August of 1999, I got married to you on one Saturday and then the next Saturday, walked the stage to get my degree, and then we took off and started our life together in um, in Connecticut back in 1999. And so we have been together since then. So for for those watching and listening, just have the context that we have been to we essentially grew up together. And so we have walked. So as far as even our life in Christ, we've had our both of our individual journeys. Um, I grew up in the church, you grew up in the church, but we still had our own kind of walks and kind of growing and growing in uh, maturity, growing spiritually and all of that good stuff. So it's not like we've always been on all the same pages of all the things at the same time. <laughs> Is that fair? That's correct. Okay. All right. So, so I want to talk about this, you know, now we've been married for how many years now? If this, if this is 2023, we just celebrated 19, our 24th. 24. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. We just celebrated our 24th wedding anniversary, not that long ago. And I think it's good for us to talk about, let's actually just kind of dig in on this Proverbs 31 husband thing, and we'll just see where the conversation goes. But just in case, cause not everybody's read Proverbs 31, like we, we say Proverbs 31 wife, but I don't know when's the last time I read Proverbs 31. So I'm going to just read. Can I just start? We're going to read. Okay, cool. So I'm going to read. This is from New King. I'm going to read New King James version of Proverbs 31. I'm going to start at verse. Okay, it starts at verse 10. And it says, who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. 
She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her husband, her husband, <laughs> that's wrong. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, this this whole Proverbs 31 husband thing came about as I was preparing um, a rapid fire that we do in our um, KDE community, right? It's these, um, these weekly emails that I send out to the entire mailing list, right? This is to Kingdom Driven and... Entrepreneur. Not everybody knows yes. KDE. Oh, sorry. Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, <laughs> right? And so when I was working on it, the scripture that I was utilizing for that was, uh, for this pillar conversation was the Proverbs thir 31, you know, um, Proverbs 31. And so as I was looking at it, I was recognizing that there was a pattern there that it was talking about all the things that the Proverbs 31 wife or woman does, but I was seeing that she wasn't alone. She had pillars set up throughout her, throughout her life that allowed her to be able to go after the things that she went up, went after. And so one of those pillars were, was her husband, right? You know, when I started to think about it, it's like, you know, um, for a husband to be a wife's pillar, it, it takes a few things, right? And you have to kind of get over yourself, but it's a natural thing for anyone that's following the king in, in his ways, right? You know, we're supposed to love, we're supposed to support our wives. And, you know, Although we're in a new age where we're not, we don't necessarily have to be the breadwinner, it still takes that kind of mindset to be able to, to go into that position of being a pillar and to support. And so I started to see some things and, you know, and that's where that, that came from, this whole Proverbs 31 husband thing. Okay. So then let's talk a little bit about that. You know, I, when you think about our walk, we are a two entrepreneur household. It wasn't always that way. Um, it was at one point I was working a corporate career and, um, and also, also parenting because we have three kids, right? So we were parenting. I was working a full-time corporate job. You were working a job as a massage therapist. And then eventually I was a full-time entrepreneur and then you became a full-time entrepreneur. And so we in our household have always been a dual income household and it's gone from jobs to business. And so, and then there was areas where we just believed that God was calling us into particular areas. Like we got on this journey of we're walking with God. God is opening up opportunities, walking us into just these, finding these destiny points in our lives and beginning to walk that out. And so I know as your wife that you have been, you've been a support pillar for me uh, from day one with all of this, right? It didn't matter what it was, whether it was a corporate career, whether it was corporate career with a side side business, whether it was full-time business, whether it was full-time business that was making no money to full-time business that was making money, you know, in all of those stages. But you allowed me to do the things that we both believe God was calling me to do. And you were able to do that without without feeling intimidated by what God was doing. You know, I was in a podcast interview the other day and the host, uh, I don't know how we ended up on this whole like marriage tip, but 
I, I could tell he was almost a little bit surprised and blown away. He's like, wow, we just did a whole marriage masterclass because I was sharing about how, how it was, it's been interesting kind of walking this thing out with you for us. Communication has been so key, but one of the dynamics in our relationship has been that you would say, if God called you to that business and he's called you to be the steward of that business, I'm going to let you be the steward of that business. Um, I have input. I support you. I have opinions. I have wisdom and all of those things. I'm going to share those things with you. But ultimately, because I trust God and I trust, I trust you walking this thing out with God and trust the position that he's placed you in, you're the, you're going to be the decision maker on those things. And I think a lot of people find that to be uh, super uncomfortable, uh, I, I, may, male and female, both men and women, that both the husband and the wife, depending on the the situations or whatever, could find that super uncomfortable. Uh, and some might even say that's not even biblical, Phil. Like some people would be like, "No, that's not even Bible. No, your husband is ahead, and you know, you know the the whole situation, right?" So, like, talk talk to us about this pillar stuff the pillar of the, of the Proverbs 31 husband, and even just your thoughts on what I just said, because I know that for some, it's kind of controversial. I, I get it that it could be controversial for some, but I think a big part of the issue, why it becomes controversial is because we will read something and we create a whole theology around what we've read without actually checking with God and, and asking for understanding or even wisdom about what that scripture means. But when I look at the Proverbs 31, hus um, Proverbs 31 women, you see scattered throughout that all the things that a husband has to be secure in doing if, in order for that to happen. So for example, if I go to, um, let's say, I'm, I'm going to give some points okay. and then we'll get into some scripture around it. Right. Yeah. But I believe as a pillar, uh, as a husband, a man must be a pillar for his wife in his family, in his community. Right. And you can see that kind of scattered throughout the um, Proverbs 31. Right. Can we define and, and pillar? Pillar, a, su a support system. Okay. Um, some people would think that a pillar and a tower are the same thing, but they, they kind of differ, uh, differ a little bit. But a pillar basically is holding up or supporting a structure, right? Um, sometimes a pillar actually is weight-bearing, and sometimes a pillar is not weight-bearing, right? But it is supporting, right? <laughs> and so that's what a pillar is, a structure that's designed to help hold up the household. And so if you call yourself a husband, um, our pastor used to say a house band, he's the one that holds the house together. Right. And so in order to do that, that means that you have to be, you have to get over yourself. Sometimes you have to support in the ways that you, you want to, so, that you need to support for your household. You know, um, there's a scripture that says, you know, in order to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, you have to become the servant of all. I took that quite literal, right? What does it look like for me to serve my wife? What does it look like for me to serve my children? What does it look like for me to serve my clients? And like, really take that seriously. How, how am I going to be the greatest in the kingdom? I have to serve everybody, right? That doesn't mean that I'm going to be taken advantage of. It doesn't mean that I should allow myself to be taken advantage of. But I'm always checking with God, okay, how can I better serve, right? And starting from that place of, of service will help, first of all, get you out of that that place of pride, like, I'm the head of the house and, you know, and my word goes and all the rest, the weird stuff that, that us men take on sometime. And it's, you know, it's bad teaching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's quite frankly what it is, bad teaching, right? Yeah. So, but let me read this. Proverbs 31, 23. Her husband is respected at the city gates where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. I've seen that play out in my life quite literally like even me being um the ceo of kingdom driven entrepreneur it's nothing that i did in this business that or that i have done in business that prepared me or, or set me up as someone that should be the ceo but god came and said that you're a father right and so because i fathered well and what the movement needed after my wife has done such a lovely job of mothering a movement 
is okay, it needs the father as well to help with identity, right? But that wouldn't come about if I had this weird thing like, oh, well, that's not my thing. So that's just your thing. But I had to come from a place of I, I needed to love you. I needed to honor you. I needed to honor the God gift that was in you and find out ways how to support, you know, and actually speak into things when God told me to speak into things. I, I had to learn how to not be afraid to speak something when God said it, even though he didn't give me a vision for Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. Oh. And so that 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 was sowing seeds towards being able to be involved eventually, right? Right. So you're talking about prior to being CEO and all those years that I was operating in that position that you were still, I mean, one of the things I, I share often is that one of the best things we've done for our marriage is the fact that we meet every single week to talk about all the things, you know, whether it's family stuff, work stuff, you know, ministry stuff when we were leading in the local church, you know, those things, right? And that's been one of the biggest gifts to our marriage, I believe one of the best things we've done. And so during that time when, when you weren't even a part of the business, it was like your voice was still uh, welcomed and heard, right? And you were just saying, so what I was hearing you say is that you had to get comfortable with also being willing to share things. Like, I know that I know that I'm giving you the space that God's called you to steward this, but I also, as your husband have a position where God will also speak to me around this. And I will, so even though I'm going to give you the space to do that, I'm also going to show up in the way that I'm called to as a support to you to share those things that God puts on my heart concerning what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's so true because if you think about it, just think about the way that God has designed men and women, right? Men, we provide seed right so our job is to provide seed to a woman the woman carries something and she gives birth to it right it's the same thing with this proverbs 31 woman um in proverbs 31 man thing right if me as a husband is not providing the seed that will help you flourish in the things that you're called to do then our household suffers from from it right and the benefits that come to the Proverbs 31 women, also, you know, part of that is, how do I say this? It's not something that she achieved on her own. Like if you read that scripture, you'll see that she had servants. Okay. And those servants, she took care of her servants. Yeah. Where did she get the finances to do that? Right? The finance had to come from somewhere first. So potentially, especially if we look at the culture of that time, women didn't go out of the household to get jobs. Their jobs were within the household, which means that someone had to provide the seed for that person to be able to produce because women are naturally producers, right? And so I think being a Proverbs 31 husband is realizing that you have seed to sow. You, we need to check with the Lord and find out what those seeds look like. And so sometimes those seeds are word seeds, encouragement, you know, your wife comes, my wife comes to me and asks me, what do you think about this? Hmm. Well, I think you're, I, I think you're well able to do it. You know, th these are just some, some of the current concerns that I, I might have, but what do you think? And then I'm encouraging her with my words. I'm giving her support where I need to give her support. And I'm willing to take on pressures while she's exploring the things that will bring increase into the household. Right? So, if we look at Proverbs 31 and 23, it says, um, what does that one say? Her husband is respected at the city gates right. where he takes his seat among the elders of the land, right? But if you look at another part of the scripture, it talks about how the wife's handiwork is seen at the city gates, right? right? So because she has done the type of things that, because I've created a space as a Proverbs 31 husband, to give you the space to do the things that you need to do. That word has gotten out about how great you are and it winds up blessing me and putting me in a position of honor at the city gate where, where the elders are. And back in that time, you know, the elders, the people that sat at the city gates were basically the city leaders. And I seen that play out in my own life because I've supported you. Now I'm in a position where I am a movement leader and I didn't do anything personally with my own hands. 
to build this thing. But now I have a responsibility to help to cultivate it. And so I believe the first thing in Proverbs 31 husband has to be is a, is someone that's willing to sow seed and, and be a pillar for his family, his wife, his children, his community. I love how you, you were talking about how this idea of serving or sowing a seed has a bunch of different expressions. You know, it's not like it has to look this particular way or it even always has to be one particular way. It, it, it was in, it was a partnership with God. So you're saying you're seeking God around what's the, how do I serve best in this season and this circumstance or what have you? And that could look different at different times in different situations. It could look completely different. And it's just mm -hmm. the willingness to walk that thing out with God so that you can look at the situation from his lens and support from that perspective. So even though maybe culture might tell you, your friends might tell you, culture might tell you a certain way of doing things, the fact that you're focused in on serving, first of all, there's so many things in the kingdom that are just like, they're just so counter, right? They counter our traditions, counter just so much. So the fact that you're willing to say, hey, I'm gonna do this thing as God's leading. This is gonna be in the way of Jesus. I'm gonna serve in the way of, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's it. And by doing that, we're showing honor. We're showing honor for the thing that God has given us, right? He who finds a wife finds a good thing. So if I found a wife, God has already given me something good. So how do I honor him for giving me something good? I treat his gift with respect. I treat his gift with honor, right? I treat his gift the way that he would treat his gift, right? That's sowing a seed still, right? I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but I'm still sowing that seed, right? And then by doing that, Proverbs 31, 31 says, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. I've sowed the seed of honor for all the things that she's done and given her space to do even more. And now the works of her hands will bring my household honor. It would bring her honor. It would bring me in a place of honor, but it, it has to start with a seed. We have to give a seed of something for a Proverbs 31 woman to work on. And if we're not giving that Proverbs 31 woman a seed, then our household is not going to be brimming with abundance the way that it could be. That's good. So then what do you say to the uh, husbands who are listening and watching and they're like, well, I heard all that stuff about the Proverbs 31 woman. I don't, I don't mean is my, what if my wife's not really, that's not that. What if that's not really describing the way my, my wife operates? Like, am I called to be a Proverbs 31 husband or Proverbs 31 man when I don't know if my wife's operating like a Proverbs 31 woman. I mean, what you want from me, Mr. Bynes? Mm. Well, I would say to that, does a field that is considered a bad field, is it really a bad field? Uh-oh. What you mean? No. If you purchase the field and it's all rocky and it got, you know, and it don't have the right type of sand or whatever the case is, do you sit around and you look at that field and be like, ah? Oh, this is a horrible field. <laughs> or do you do something with it? Uh oh. Right? And so if you found a wife and you were supposed to find a good thing, there was something in that woman that you were supposed to find precious. And that thing is what you're supposed to continue to sow into, right? And you're supposed to help cultivate that ground as, as you're growing together. See, there are some things in our relationship, right, that are not the typical, right? You don't clean like that. I right? don't what? Cl oh, you don't, clean? You don't clean the house like that. Clean, <laughs> I've got my, my particular areas. Yes. And there's some things you do and, and you'll do it if you see it happening and you'll, you know, you'll straighten it up or whatever the case is, but you're not a deep cleaner. Right. Okay. You're not uh, a woman that's always looking to be in the kitchen to cook. Right. Um, and I don't look for you to do those things. Right. I've discovered that in the beginning, I could have been frustrated if I kept looking, oh, well, why don't she clean or why she, I knew she wouldn't, I knew that you were a go-getter and that you, that you were um, a breadwinner in our household from the beginning. 
because you were always on the trajectory of being a corporate person in, in the beginning. And you were always on the trajectory of making more money than I was going to be making in the beginning. I knew that from the start. I wasn't intimidated by it. I just wanted to make sure you're okay with it. And we had conversations about that way in advance of us getting married. When we were still in high school, <laughs> we had conversations about this stuff. So no one was taken by surprise. So when I'm in a situation now where you're going out to your corporate job when you still worked at IBM, I had to learn how to make sure I was doing a better job taking care of the house because I wasn't working the same type of hours, right? And for a while, I, I hadn't found work yet because we moved to a whole another area and I didn't know how to work in that area doing massage because it was totally different from how things were in Florida, right? But I had to take upon myself, get with the Lord, what can I do? Start to do some stuff around the house. Over the years, I've become more proficient at it, right? So what, what am I doing? I'm doing the things that allow you to go out and be all that you were called to be and all that you do very well. I'm setting an atmosphere in which you can explode in your greatness and your goodness, right? And not trying to force you to, into something else. So I, I would say to that man, you, you should have examined your wife ahead of time. And if you didn't, you already purchased it. So, you know, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be weird, but I'm trying to take no angles. I'm, I'm trying to take away every angle from a man okay. concerning this thing, right? You've already purchased this land. Do the best that you can with this land. What's the value in this land? If you can't grow um, fruits and vegetables there, can you build a parking lot? Can you, like, there's, like, we, <laughs> I think we do weird stuff sometimes. And it's really simple. You cultivate the ground that you have. And by cultivating the ground that you have, you bring out the wealth that's within that ground. And so that's what I would say to <laughs> Uh, a husband that's like, well, that's just my wife. And no, cultivate the ground you have and bring out the wealth that's in that ground because every piece of land has value. Yeah, that's good. And I think so. our approach has been to be partners in all the things, right? And so when you were talking about earlier how we're not necessarily, you know, traditional, I don't even know what's traditional these days anymore, but the idea is that, we operate as partners. And so it's just, we're in this together. And so there's things that have to get done. There's some things that you can outsource, but not all the things can be outsourced. And so, you know, so what, what are we going to do and what does that look like? And, and, um, and let's partner in getting the things done. Right. And so I think about that and yet yeah, we, we're here talking about our application of what this looks like. But I don't want to take away from the fact that that's our dynamic. We're a dynamic of two entrepreneurials, you know, two entrepreneurs that are doing the things that God's called us to do um, in areas where there's overlap as well as areas where there's, you know, differentiation, like with you with your massage practice um, and me on the good faith group side and all of those things. And so we operate like that. But there's also... That's our expression of our Proverbs 31 wife, thir Proverbs 31 husband scenario. Um, this isn't to take away from whatever is the roles and whatever areas and whatever your assignment is. There's some who are like, listen, right now, um, God's called me into this season. I'm talking about to the wife real quick. God's called me in this season to be focused in on this business, but really on for a season. Cause what I see in the future is when we have these children, I'm going to be focused fully in on homeschooling and this and that, and that's going to be the expression of what it looks like. And in that scenario, all of these same things apply, right? So we're talking concepts, but they have different application, you know, for your particular scenario. I think about, you know, our journey and how there's been just kind of like, there's been different seasons and different things, different assignments and all of those things. And I think a lot of couples go through this where they have some dramatic shifts, right? So for example, you might have married, you, you the wife that you married was the go-getter corporate person. But then later on, as your establishing family is like, well, no, that corporate thing was interesting, but I really feel like God's called me to focus in for the next decade, for the next 15 years on focusing on growing, uh, building and nurturing the kids and all of those things, right? Managing the household and all the things. 
And then it's like, oh, wait, that's different. <laughs> that's different. It was one thing that it was another. Someone else might have really thought their dream was to, that, that wife's dream when they were a kid and when they were in college even, their dream was, listen, I, I want to raise a family. I want to be at home. That's my thing. And then God calls them into something completely different. And then they're on a whole new assignment. And it's almost like, this is why God has to be at the center. and We have to be willing to walk with him because we don't know the fullness of our assignments from the jump. And even once we know them, we don't, they're not the same forever. And sometimes there could be some big differences. So that's why we have to see God around. What does it look like going back to your point around being a pillar? What does it look like for me to support right now? You know, I saw, <laughs> I saw this thing on Facebook the other day. And this gentleman had did a po you know, made a post and was just like, um, how do you look, dude? Dude, you are, you're bums if, you know, your wife comes to you. Wait, wait, I'm going to get this. I'm going to quote it wrong. But it was kind of like, imagine, imagine looking your wife dead in her eye, you know, when she gets, get, when she gets pregnant or once the baby's born and saying, okay, how are you going to help with this thing? Oh, it's on the finances side. Like, all right, so how are you going to help? How how are we going to make this thing happen? And he's just like, man, if you're not willing to take that full, that full load yourself, you're a bum basically. Like, you're, you're mm. <laughs> and this is what he said. And I, I'm just curious. I didn't tell you about this, but I was reading the comments, which I found really fascinating kind of going through all of this. And in light of this conversation and, uh, just the, a, a framework and concepts around being a Proverbs 30, one husband, what, how do you react to that, to that mindset? Well, I, I will go back to one of the first things I said when we got started, a pillar does not always handle the, the weight, right? So if we're Christians, right? And Jesus says, transfer the, bur the burdens of your weight to me and take upon yourself, my weight, my yoke, which is easily, easy and light. Why would I turn around and be like, I got to take on the burden of the whole household. That's not really what's happening here. It's God is creating an opportunity for you to handle a burden that's uniquely designed for you based off of what he wants to give you, based off of what he's already placed inside of you. We do what we do sometimes is we do some weird stuff. We take our own thought process, our own preference, which might be right for us. And we try to make that a one size fit all for everybody. Mm. And that's not how it works. Like if we are communing and we're communicating with God, which we're supposed to do, the Bible says, man ought, man ought always pray. That doesn't mean that you have to be on your knees praying, praying, God save you. No, it means that we should always be in communication with God. And if we're always in communication with God, he will always be enlightening us with some knowledge, some wisdom, or some understanding for our situation and what is the best thing to do for our situation, right? Which is not this, well, if someone is, you know, your wife is dead, well, there are some wives that will have a baby and automatically be like, okay, I want to do this and I want to do that. And how can I support? And they have the bandwidth to do that. If that's the type of field that you have, you need to be able to flow with that type of field or else you're going to frustrate your field. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, he won't let me do anything. And I got all this years of education. No, you need to learn how to work together, figure out, okay, what's going to be the rhythm for our household with God and with your spouse. And once you guys have solidified what the rhythm of your household looks like, anything that fits within that rhythm, you can, you have the freedom to explore, right? Because naturally a woman is going to, if for me in my massage business, I am visionary, right? But my wife is always, always has ideals about things that I can do. And she's always presenting them presenting them to me, not in a way that's trying to take over, but have you considered this, right? I would be a fool to not receive the thing that her, her, her level of, pro of production, right? Cause she takes things in and she's experienced things over her life. She's done, he, she has an MBA. I would be a fool not to hear what she has to say because she might've taken something that I've said, thought on it for a while, and then came with something, she spit something out. Hey, you should consider this, or have you considered this? Hmm, 
I haven't. Let me take this before God. And God brings some wisdom to me. Yeah, that's a good idea. You should do it for this, that, and the other, right? That's not something I would get as a husband if I didn't take the opportunity to honor the gift that God has given me, right? So I feel like we we do some weird stuff sometimes. That, but as a Proverbs 31 husband, we always need to be thinking from the place of honor. We all we always want to be in communion with God. We always want to be a pillar or a support. That doesn't mean we take on the burdens or the weight of the household. Too many men do that. And then they break down over time, wow. right? They need pressure relief. And so they need pressure relief from all this pressure that they placed on themselves. And so they go out and they do some stuff that is not becoming of a Proverbs 31 husband. You need they go out. I was gonna say you gotta go in more to the on club. that. You gotta talk more. They start going to the club. They need to they need to um hang out with their friends all the time. They're yelling at their wife. They're looking for the attention of women you know, around town or whatever, right? Because they've taken on pressure and they're looking for a way to relieve the pressure when they weren't supposed to take on that pressure themselves anyway. Wow. That was always supposed to be distributed over the main beam in the household, which is Jesus Christ. <laughs> It is what it is. That was a whole so, word. As a pillar, let's get let's not get it twisted, right? Yes, you're there for support, but you're not supposed to be the the sole purport, sole support for your household. You're not. But you are supposed to support. You don't have to be the weight bearing support. That's Jesus' responsibility. You taking on a job that you weren't supposed to take on. Now, he'll tell you what to support. Yeah, a pillar is, let's say you have a pillar in the front of your house. It's going to support the weight of the front of the house a little bit. But if that pillar wasn't there, the roof is not going to fall down. It might just be for decoration. Who knows, right? You have some columns in the front of houses that are solely for decoration. But it has a purpose, right? And I feel like that's the same thing in, in, with our walk with God and, and being a Proverbs 31 husband. We have to recognize that we are there to be a pillar, but being a pillar doesn't mean that you have to take on the weight of things for yourself because Jesus already told us he, he is the weight bearer and we're supposed to take on his yoke. Yeah. That reminds me of a story that you've told often when you and I have ha have conversations and people interview us about marriage stuff and stuff like that. And I remember you sharing this story about how, there was a season where um, I don't I don't even exactly remember where in our story this happened, but you were kind of railing with God, kind of just like you know I'm trying to I'm trying to um, I'm trying to provide, I'm trying to be the provider, like I'm I'm trying to provide for my family, mm -hmm. and tell that story, tell that story. Yeah, so it was while God had called you into this kingdom driven entrepreneur life. And there was not money coming in from that, you know, not whatsoever, like money was coming in, but all the money was being reinvested, right. <laughs> and you were and you were spending a lot of time doing it, right? right. And I and I knew that that's where you were supposed to be. But I'm like, Okay, Lord, if that's the case, and we're having these challenges, these financial challenges, because we've gone from a household where you were making close to 100,000 at the time. And me as a massage therapist, I was 40 something thousand, maybe 50,000 on the high end, right. but probably somewhere in the forties. And so obviously there were some things falling apart financially that we couldn't take care of, but God himself called you out of it. And I was in agreement with it. Right. So I said to him, I was like, well, I'm just trying to take care of my household. Cause I, my, the wisdom that I got was, oh, well, you know what? I can start working more hours. I'm only working about this many hours at the place where I was, the massage place I was working. I can increase my hours and that will create a little bit more space. I increase my hours and instead of me gaining more clients, the clients that I had just spread out over my schedule. <laughs> and that frustrated me to, I don't want to say to no end, but it was frustrating me. Sure. And so I'm having a walk and I'm talking to God about that in a situation. I'm like, Lord, I'm just trying to take care of my family. And he said to me, you don't take care of yourself. I take care of you. Wow. Like, not only do you not take care of your family, you don't even have the ability to take care of yourself. I'm the one that takes care of you. And so what he was trying to show me in that season was, even though it looked like things were falling apart, even though it looked like I didn't have what it took to pay all the bills, he was taking me to another place, right? So fast forward, we wound up losing our house from that thing. 
right? And But he's already talked to me about that. And in the instance when we lost our house and we had to start paying hotel bills and, and, and amounts of money that was far and far greater than what I would have need to pay um, mortgage. our mortgage and anything else associated with our house, all of a sudden the floodgates open and I'm able to pay everything. The, the hotel, whatever. And I'm like, well, Lord, that would, would have been nice <laughs> to be able to, you know, do this. Could we have done this six months ago, was, a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess what he was showing me is like, I have something better for you. I have something bigger for you. And with everything, you have to sow a seed in order to receive it. Now, I didn't get those actual words at the time, but I know that to be the case. Like, unless a seed goes in, into the ground and die, it remains alone. So we could have had this, townhouse or condo what it was, i think it was we had a townhouse style condo. condo yeah yeah mm -hmm. we could have had this condo even now yeah. and been in a decent position but it would not have been the seed that it was supposed to be for um us being propelled into the things that we're walking in now and even now as we're sometimes we deal with some financial situations once again it's a seed god knows how to get us to give him the seed because he wants to give us better than what we currently have. Wow. That's why also when we're, when we're doing stuff and it seems like, oh, I could do this, I can do that. And then he starts to give us vision that no longer aligns with where we are already comfortable with. And he takes us somewhere completely different when we could have stayed in that path and kept incrementally growing, right? But sometimes it looks like we're taking a step back because he's taking us from a place because once again, he's, he's asking for a seed. <laughs> yeah wow you said a lot in there sorry no 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 no. it's good i'm just trying to figure out where i want to go next because you said a lot there so i because i'm trying to I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about what men could be thinking that are listening right and i'm thinking how there's some men are like but 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 I'm supposed to be the provider, but, but, but I'm supposed to be the protector, but, but, but like they, they might be feeling like you are suggesting shirking a responsibility that is, that is in the Bible. And so, um, they might be feeling a little uncomfortable about some of your words. So how do you, how do you kind of navigate this? Well, I'm supposed to be, well, I know he said to you, you don't take care of you or whatever, but you're still called to be the provider, Phil. So, um, what, what do you have to say about that? Like, what, what do you say? And you're actually, you're not just, honestly, you're not just talking to men right now. You're talking, <laughs> Holy Spirit's like, he talking to the women too, but mm. we're talking to everybody here, but what has God shown you? He's showing me that he does things like this to challenge our, our, our thinking. Cause we think that we're grown and we think we understand stuff and we think we understand his words. So we read something and we said, this is what this means. Absolutely. Right. And sometimes what he wants to do is bring a challenge to our life to actually reveal a deeper meaning of what, what he's trying to tell us to do. So as being a provider, that doesn't mean that I go outside of the house and I have to make the most money in my house. And because I make the most money in my house, I'm a provider. That's not necessarily provision. That's a form of provision, but that's not the end all be all. If I know how to go to my neighbor and get something that my household needs, bring it to my wife and she knows how to put that thing together and it's going to multiply 10 times of what I could have did if I just kept going out of the house. Did I not just provide for my house? Wow. Did I not just put my household in the best position for advancement, right? The eyes don't necessarily do the work of walking, but it tells us where we need to go. It shows us where we need to go. And so the understanding of how the body flows together, how we're supposed to as a unit flow together, that's all, I think that's where the provision is coming from. A lot of times God will speak to you as the husband if you're um, in a position where you're tender enough to hear what he has to say, right? That will unlock something for your household. I wasn't in kingdom driven entrepreneur, but a lot of the things that my wife implemented came from the seed of a word from my mouth. That's right. She's like, oh, you know, baby, I've been trying to figure this out, this out, that out, blah, blah, blah. 
I don't know what I should do. I feel like I could do this. I feel like I could do that. And in that moment, I'm just sitting there and I'm, and then I hear something in a knowing in my spirit. And I say what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. I cast that thing to my wife and I release it. And I say, I don't, I'm not saying that this is what you should do, but this is kind of what I'm thinking and you do with it what you want. Right. right? So I gave her a seed now for her business and she can do something with that seed. When she did something with that seed, it produced something. Guess what? I was responsible for it because I gave the seed. I was a provider. Mm. See, like our understanding of provision is is skewed towards our American culture, mm. right? We, we're taught we got to pull ourselves up by our bootstrap straps, and we got to do everything ourselves. And you know, you're not a man unless you can provide for your household. Okay, well, you know, their definition of provision is not the same definition of provision as the Bible. If we look at uh, the Bible and how people flowed, there was a whole lot of community going on. Not just in an in, in-house community, but people, you know, from house to house, whatever. It was a lot of community going on, right? People had support. But our culture has taught us that, nope, you don't need anybody. You could do it yourself, you know? And so that's why we get these these weird things that come out of that. But the truth is, if you're if you're going to the father <laughs> and you're asking him questions, you know, if you're asking, if you're seeking, if you're knocking, like the Lord tells us to do, then he will give us something, right? He gives seed to the sower. And so when we receive that seed, we sow it into our wives as husbands, right? Sometimes that seed is monetarily. We went outside the house, we got actual currency. We sow that into my uh, into the wife's vision. I did that for a long time with Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur would not have been able to survive if I wasn't working in allowing my wife. I say allowing, that sounds weird. But if I didn't <laughs> provide the space for my wife and her co-founder to continue to do what they were doing, it wouldn't have survived. You would have had to shut it down. But in that way, I was giving to my wife and I was giving to God even with the little bit that I had, right? So I think we we can get it twisted real easy thinking that provision means that I need to be the primary breadwinner and primary breadwinner means that I need to go out and make the most money in the house and my wife needs to be home and she needs to cook and she needs to clean and she needs to, like, that's weird stuff. Like, if that's what's valuable and if that's the, if that's the wife that you found then and, and that's the agreement that y'all have, then that's that's perfect. That's absolutely right. But that doesn't mean it's right, because you might even had that and you might have agreed upon that. But along the line, God changed things up. I had no intention of ever being a CEO of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. That's... Don't even really want to be it. Right. Except for God told me to do it. It would be so much easier for me to just stay in my lane as a massage therapist and just do my little massages. And when I come home, I don't have to think about nothing else. I did my work. I'm done with my work. I come home, I veg out. Yep. That's not my lot in life because God <laughs> said you're a father. And he said that you're the next CEO of this movement because he wanted to do something in me. He wanted to grow me. He couldn't leave me the same. He also wanted to do something for my wife and grow my wife. He wanted to do something for the people that's connected to a movement and grow those people in the movement. So because we're in community, God always is causing this change of position. And so I just, I would challenge you to, 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 to strengthen your understanding by asking God what it looks like for your household. Because you'll find out some things like I found out when he said, you don't take care of yourself. I take care of you. And then you have to explore what that means. And he'll, t and he'll show you <laughs> what that means. And so, yeah. That's really good. Is there anything else that stands out for you, you know, in this kind of conversation around being a pillar as a husband? Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you're like, hmm, we should have talked about that too? Um, I would just say that, like, just be along for the ride and be excited about the opportunity to support, right? Because ultimately, like, our life here is, it's not about what we're doing here. This is about the, uh, us being here on earth is about us being processed into the fullness of what God has called us to be, right? He gives us bits and pieces at a time. He gives us chunks at a time that we need to work through because he knows where we're lacking. And so he's like, okay, I put this inside of you, but to get to this, I need to deal with that. And so he'll bring some some things that's tension, right? Like I, 
I think we had a conversation recently about pressure, right? Yes, we did. And how pressure is is designed to produce character, right? Well, it's through the processing of the pressure. Like I get under the weights of at a bench press as a man. I okay, let me talk man talk. Now. <laughs> you go to the gym, you working out, right? <laughs> You're on a bench press, and you can do 180 pounds. Let's say some of y'all can do 300. 315. Let's say you can do 315, but you get under 115 pounds and you and you push it 100 times, right? Did you do as much work for the building of your muscles as you could have done by increasing that weight a little bit? That's the same thing that God does with us. Like when we've passed a certain point, when we've grown past a certain point, when he's processed a certain amount, then he works on, okay, now I need to do this to process you a little bit more. You're strong. Let me make you stronger. This area, you're a little bit weak. Let me make that area stronger. And now you don't have to do this area where you're strong as much because I'm trying to round you out. And so I think that's what this processing with God is all about. Being being a husband, being a wife, being a child of God, it's all this walk on earth is all about processing us into the fullness of what he's called us to be, what he's placed inside of us and, and for us to be, to have that revealed to us over time. Yeah. You know, because it speaks about how great he is. Yeah, that's good. That's really, really good. I hope that made sense. It did make sense. It made sense to me, babe. Okay. <laughs> well, that's you the only person that matter. The rest of them, the rest of y'all suckers. <coughs> y'all get what y'all get. <laughs> oh my gosh. This was really good. This was really good. I know that you will be back again for more conversations on the kingdom over everything podcast you are my favorite person on the planet to talk all kingdom things with and so you will definitely be back but i just appreciate you sharing sharing your heart around this stuff i mean everything that you're saying isn't just theory to you uh as your wife and your best friend i could tell you 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 have walked this talk that you're talking um every step of the way, even when it was challenging and, uh, and it is challenging. Um, it's not always easy, but because of his grace, there's an ease to it. And I've watched you do that. And so I just appreciate you greatly, uh, not just for this conversation, but just for who you are. And I love you. Yeah. I love you too. And you guys be encouraged because I didn't start out this way, but this is part of the processing, right? Part of the development, (laughs) right? Yeah. And this understanding comes after, you know, it's it's not something I got ahead of time. It's something that I get to look back at now and be like, oh, I see what you did here, Lord. Right. Oh, and I see how that applies to Proverbs 31. Isn't that special? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice when he pulls some pieces together? Mm-hmm. He'd be like, yeah, I did that, son. I did that. I was like, yeah, you yeah. did <laughs> I love it. We'll have to explore some more aspects of marriage and even some of our journey and some of the challenges of walking stuff out. We can explore those other things at other times. But thanks for joining me. And for you guys who may or may not be familiar with Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, which Phil is now the CEO of Awesome Movement. So if that's your heart to do business and partnership with God, Uh, You want to focus on holistic profitability eternally, kingdom impact and influence, as well as financially, you got to connect. I would suggest you can go to kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com, but I would suggest actually going with uh, alignwithkingdom.com and taking this pretty cool assessment that's over there to just kind of see where there could be some development for you and aligning with God as it relates to how you uh, show up in business. So is there anything else you wanted to shout out or anything, Phil? No, that's good. All right. Good stuff. (laughs) All right. Well, until next time, everyone. And until next time, babe, love you and thank you.